I'm Wasting Fiber, and today we are on our way to Narandera for a weekend with Max. It's a Mad Max car show in the middle of nowhere. As some of you know, I come from an alternate timeline where a cataclysmic event known as the Big Bang happened at the end of 1981. But what you may not know is, in the world that I come from, Mad Max movies are not fiction. They're documentaries. One note about my name. Sometimes people see me and they say, Wasteland! It's like, well, Wasteland is the adjective. Firebird is the proper noun. So, so you could be like, Wasteland Gerald, and that would be fine. I, I'm Wasteland Firebird, you're Wasteland Gerald. It's Wasteland Mad Skelly behind the camera. But I'm Firebird. Also, Wasteland Firebird works. And Wasty Birdo, and I, I do like Wasty, I like Birdo. And you guys are Wasties. Everyone can be a Wasty. Those always look like Confederate flags to me. If you are a fan of Mad Max, be sure to check out my short film, 1981, The Fall of Seven Sisters Petroleum. It's intended to be an unofficial prequel to Mad Max 2 Road Warrior. It explains the origin of four of the characters from Mad Max 2, but you have to figure out which characters are which. You're Dave. Number one Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Number one Dave. Dave do you, doing a good do you job. know who I am? I do. How do you know who I am? You are Wasteland Firebird. Cor Corvette. <laughs> Wasteland Firebird. <laughs> From the Summonats actually, um, I was watching Summonats videos and yours came up and <laughs> no, you're doing a bloody good job. Yeah. I heard that they were going to be crushing something with a monster truck tomorrow. So, that, that was correct. And um, the old mate rang up today and said it was too hot. It's going to be 40 odd plus. Too so. hot to crush things with a monster truck. Well, obviously a bit soft. You know, not as hard as we are, are they, eh? Is the there truck going to overheat or are people going to overheat? Mick told us that you might be working on some sort of a museum of stunts or something like that. Oh, it's not working. It's, it's going ahead. It's just about finished, it is. And obviously, being a huge fan of Mad Max, it's just one of those things that, you know, it's, it showcases stunt performers and so many stunts in the Mad Max franchise. So, uh, yeah, we've got a couple of interceptors that we're working on for the museum. Obviously, the snake truck that we've got here today. But uh, Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, but this is my so first. So that's yours? That's, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So this is my actual first Mad Max sort of event because it's close to home. And I'm usually too busy working on the museum and things. So it's it's an awesome thing to see something close like that. And, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited because we eventually want to run things at my museum like this as well and get people excited. And, and so where out. is this museum and what's it called? Called. It's uh, we're at June, New South Wales, just outside of Wagga Wagga. Yeah, we came and through there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's called the Stuntman and Daredevil Hall of Fame Australia. Seems like they don't really do stunts anymore in movies, do they? Unfortunately, not. It's uh, I've been a stunt performer for thirty odd years, and I get a bit disappointed when I have to watch all this CGI stuff because it's really cool that someone actually risks their life to entertain us. And uh, and every time you go to a movie, especially the old movies, someone was risking their life to make us be entertained. But it actually cool. makes the film better. It's more engaging when you can actually see that risk and you can feel that risk viscerally it feels more real oh for sure it's like when people come and see me do a live uh, performance and things you get invested into it as well especially here in australia australian stunt performers are very tough people like they they eat nails for breakfast the old ones i can tell you oz studio oz, oz studio okay oh, there we go oz studio yes this is this is yuri from oz studio he makes films and he goes to all these events just like i do and he always records his own little documentary of the event and then you make little films and stuff too it's just like yeah yeah no, you, you're like my partner in crime. I, I actually saw so your videos about the cars. Mm -hmm. or you just revisit a few places, like, different places, and the, the, the talking about the car and the quality. Like, 
this car in Australia, he and this car uh, in the USA. Exactly. Like, what is different? <laughs> exactly. When you have a custom cut sign indicating the phone number to call if you're interested in buying the car, I don't think you're that eager to sell the car. When it'll look, when it'll buy. You say he occasionally takes breaks from, from speaking over the loudspeaker. Are you recording? Yes. My YouTube video. Go now, I'm having a drink. Okay, he's giving us a chance to speak. Wait, people are cheering that he shut up. No, come on, this guy's great. He's great, but he's just very amplified. Well, so we got the American van. And then we got the Australian vans, and now I'm torn. I just actually bought an American van in the U.S., but of course I love these too. I think we might need to look the over Australian here first. Australian, mate. Aussies. Yeah. Well, the thing is, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. This, this is more unusual, at least to see in Australia. You know? Oh yeah, but that's that's our version of them there. Well, I know. The oh, I know. I'm in love look with these things. They're beautiful. I'm in love with these things. We made a whole video like in uh, Geelong where I found a Chrysler Drifter for the first time. I'd never seen one before. <laughs> Have you ever seen one? Yeah, I've seen a lot. They're, they're rare. I drive trucks. Big, okay. Long road trains. Uh huh. Which, you you drive road trains? With four trailers. Four trailers? Yeah. I didn't even know they made them with four trailers. Yeah. yeah How many yeah. tires does one of those have on it? 106. 106 tires? Yeah. In in the US we have trucks, we call them 18 wheelers. Yeah, yeah. You have 106 wheelers. Yeah, yeah. That's so amazing. I've got the, the, the tractor truck, the, what you call the tractor, it's the truck, prime mover. Uh -huh. Then one trailer. Yeah. A dolly and another trailer. A little dolly, another trailer, a little dolly, another trailer. So if I pull in here, my back trailer would be down the back near the shed. Yeah, <laughs> you're illustrating the distance. You're like, and then another trailer, and another trailer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I want to go for a ride on one of these things. Is, is there any way, do you ever think you could ever take anybody else for a ride in these? Uh, this is how you contact me. If you can ever think okay. of a way. That's yeah, my... I can put you onto somebody who can take you for a little ride. If, if you can kind of hook me do up. Do you know how to change tires? Not a tire that weighs 300 pounds. Yeah, they're easy. <laughs> Girls do it smarter, see? I'll teach you You got to work smarter, not harder, huh? Yeah, I made the front cover. The front page of National Trucking... Oh, that's awesome. I was. went from modeling. <laughs> you went from modeling to driving trucks. To driving a truck. So you, were, you ever on the, were you ever in the front truck. of a magazine when you modeled? Because that would be really funny. It's like, I'm on this magazine and also on this I magazine. I was, but, um, oh, I don't know where they are. <laughs> Mum's put them away. That's a long time ago. Yeah, it's been, been, been a few weeks since you... 25 years. So I decided I wanted to ask about this van first for my YouTube channel. Yeah. I really wanted to go check out the Aussie ones, but this is like an American one. Yeah. Can we like look around in there? Yeah, yeah. Well, I noticed the seats, they have like these great stripes. Yeah, and... yeah. Well, I've done. I changed that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In the, in the headlining, I did that. The fur. And, uh, but other than that, you know, it's pretty... Oh, I haven't even seen the fur headliner. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to have to go check that out. But yeah, I just bought a van in the States and we're going to pick it up in a month. Oh, yeah. what did, what did you and so it's a 77 Chevy G20, but it has oh, been yeah, yeah. customized. It yeah. has like a medieval interior with like swords and stuff cool. hanging and carpet too, you know, like wall yeah, and yeah, ceiling yeah. carpet, yeah. everything. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. We're going to take it on a big road trip yeah, yeah. soon. I can't wait. The reason I bought this van in the U.S. is because we did not really preserve the van culture. Here, people Stop. are preserving. Yeah. I mean, look how many yeah. vans there are. Yeah, yeah. And why? Because there's a van in Mad Max 1, I guess. But otherwise, it's just everybody has vans and they well, love funny. these. I, I sold one of those to buy that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a little crazy, but yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so that's why we're doing this spontaneous road yeah, trip to go yeah. pick up the van. And yeah, in a couple weeks on the channel, you'll see we'll do a trip of the whole, we'll probably cross the whole country unless the van breaks down and then yeah, we won't. Yeah. Who knows what'll happen? It's a documentary, we never know. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's you gotta risk it to get the biscuit. Last time, last time we went there, we went to Dallas, and where we were staying was where this van come from. And it just happened to be like the deal of things on the back. That's where we were staying. <laughs> and then we bought the van that just happened to be the same place. That is awesome. I love that. <laughs> so I bought the van here, but for a long time I used to hate it when people would leave those dealer badges yeah. but then if it gets old enough and enough decades pass then you start to really like that they left it on yeah, there. Yeah, it's a bit of history. Yeah, like when I get a new car the first thing I do is rip that stuff off but yeah. like 
when you see a 40 year old car with those on it you get really excited yeah, yeah. Did, did you like the summer this what's that? oh god it was crazy it was wild yeah, we made a yeah. video I went this year. I went we, this year, oh okay yeah. yeah we made a video of it like uh yeah. it was just ridiculous like yeah. I mean, there's I was saying that like we do have things like that in the United States, but I really shouldn't say that. I don't. We don't I don't think we have anything like it because the burnout contests are different. You know what I mean? We probably have drag racing, but like the the burnouts were just insane. Okay. Are insane. And then the, the whole okay, the whole uh, lap around the the event and people. The sign says huge, no burnouts, yeah. and it's like burnout, 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 burnout. Now in the U.S., if you did that. They would just end the whole event. They would say like, we can't afford our liability insurance. We, we can't have you guys doing laps anymore because everybody ruined it. Yeah. But here they're just like, now don't you be doing those burnouts kids. And okay, we're gonna kick you out, but the rest of you can just keep going. So it was a little bit crazy. That's more like what I expected to see when I came to Australia. I thought that you guys were wild and crazy. I mean, the colony was founded of criminals, you know? You need, you need to keep that criminal mindset. Americans are too boring. The Nats is like, I, I was at Summer Nats 1. Oh, you were at Summer Nats 1? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When was that? 35, 35 years ago. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that car there, the Mustang was there. Gary Myers' Mustang, that was a Summer I got a photo of that car at Summer Nats 1. Well, the cool thing about Summer Nats is we get older, but the cars stay the same age. Yeah, yeah. The guy works for United Motor, trimmers and upholstery. That's why the seats look so awesome. Okay, well that was the American van. That was the American van, I had to go visit it, sorry. Because I'm in Australia, and I'm really excited about the Australian vans too. I really can't decide which I like better. There's a million Sandmans over here though. And there was only one American van, so. Purple and green, orange and yellow, yellow and blue. We have every color in the M&M's bag. And there's a Sandman ute. Okay, I don't really understand how a Sandman ute works, though. Sandman is like going to sleep, going to bed, you know, like in the back of your panel van. I guess you could sleep in the back of that, if you don't mind the flies. You know, the first thing we you know, everybody that always sells with it, all knows what it is. Look over here, I think we know this car. We saw this car in the four car shows in one day video. And the day we released that video, Vince Gill died. Mustang, 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 see him every car show, but I mean, bullet Mustang and right-hand drive, that is a bit surprising. But the thing I'd really prefer to talk about is Bullet. I mean, what a movie. If you've not seen Bullet, check it out. It's real stunts flying through the streets of San Francisco. Steve McQueen being at not just the coolest Steve McQueen can be, but Steve McQueen being the coolest that any human has ever been in all of human history. That's right. He's cooler than the Fonz. What we're raising funds for is I run a program called Beef Up Australia's Let's Get Rural. And it's a social connection project. And we're very big on mental health. We're all about bringing communities together. We bring in entertainment, we have guest speakers, we have all sorts of stuff. But it's all about people coming together and not realising that they're having a mental health session. Because when we start communicating, and when we start reminiscing, and sharing stories. Wait, are we having a mental health session right now? Basically. You're, you're doing something to me here. Basically. I feel better about Basically. myself already. So what's your business that you run here? Bait, balls, and bullets. What do you do there? Bait, balls, and bait, bullets. Bait, balls. See, I don't... Balls, I don't, basketball. Okay, okay. <laughs> so yes. bait, sports balls, and bullets. bullets. Okay. Yeah. The engine is not actually running at the moment, and the exhaust is not actually producing smoke. They have a electric motor spinning the blower and turning the light and a smoke machine to make the smoke. But hey, it, it's an effect. Excellent. Take a flyer. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Oh my goodness, you got the uh, Melvin, Melvin Z book. book. These are like rare, hard to find. Well, no one else in Australia has them for sale. I'm the only place you can buy them, but they're not cheap and uh, they're not in English. So yeah, so if you're rich and you speak French, and you like Mad Max, this book is for you. Yeah, so um, I started making the sci-fi horror comics. And because I was making the comics, they uh, commissioned me to make these Australian movie comics. 
and that sort of also led on to Mad Max and so on. So working with Australian movies, it was all, all stemmed from making yeah, my own sci-fi and horror comic books. Really cool. Yeah. When I was a kid, it was Mad Max running on empty midnight spares. Yeah. Watch them over and I over. I have seen all of them. Yeah. Yes. So I loved it. And when they said, can you make a comic? I was like, don't even, oh, don't pay me. I'll make that comic. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Like, uh, but yeah, Stunt Rock, Stunt Rock was a good one to start with because they wanted me to adapt these, this entire movie into a 14 page story. So you get a feature length movie in just 14 pages. Okay. Yeah. Which is very tough. Yeah. But luckily, that movie has almost no plot. Okay, well, there you go. It's so, so it's like Fury Road. <laughs> I could do that in two pages. They go one way, they turn around. They come back, yeah. And uh, I've also actually got work. I can't, tell, I can't tell you what the movie is yet, but I've got work coming up. Me and one of the artists from the comics, uh -huh. we've got work coming up in a new movie that's being made. So hopefully in the final credits, you'll see our names on there. We have a friend who operated camera for a very recent professional movie, yeah. and she can't tell us what the movie is. Yeah. But I'm excited to find out. Yeah, that's yeah. no, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, the little interceptor drives. The, the little one drives. I didn't know that. I thought it was like a pedal car. It's driving. Camry wagon, 1990 model Camry wagon, on a Hilux chassis with a V6 Holden engine in it. It's uh, just one of a kind. One day um, it'll be finished, but it'll probably not. Oh no! He keeps, no, it's never no, he keeps finding something else to do to I it. I put the sunroof in two weeks ago, and it is four-wheel drive. What are these things for on the windshield wipers? They to hold it down. You don't see them anymore. Yeah, there for this era, like 1990 odd. The, the wipers were really bad on it, so they're a, what they call a wiper aid. So they push wind onto the windscreen, so it holds the windscreen wipers while they're flashing, flapping. Well, now we have the answer. I was yeah. asking in another video. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I remember them from the 80s even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can open it up, it's unlocked. Unless you lock it. No.
Okay, well the thing I want to look at is right here. This part number, this lock, is the one that was like on my car when I was a little tiny kid. I remember pulling this up and pushing that down. And it's so cool that they've kept that through all those years. The question I wanted to ask is just, it seems like in Australia when you modify cars, it's a lot harder to get them legal to drive on the street. But you've done it, so what is, what's involved with that? You just have to find yourself a good engineer. The engineer has to be uh, approved by the government to, um, to let any vehicle to be deemed safe. So this one here, it took me four months to get the paperwork, um, but I have to carry it with me everywhere. So I have a paperwork for the modifications to the body and a, um, and a paperwork for the engine and gearbox swap. So long as the paperwork's clean, you boys can do what you like out there. Roger Ward is here today. He played Fifi in Mad Max. And so I, I'm trying to figure out what to ask him. I, I'm trying to think of something to ask him that he's never been asked before. It's, it's not that easy. He's probably been asked a lot of questions. I'm so, I'm so nervous. This is, this is almost as nerve wracking as if I were getting to interview Fletch. Howdy, Roger. Hey, hey, I was trying to think of questions that I could ask you that you might never have been asked in your entire life. Uh -huh. So I thought of a couple, okay? So here goes. What's the foundation for all of your beliefs about the universe and existence? Yeah, yeah. Well, having seen it from space, that little tiny bowl that we are puts you into uh, uh, realism, you know, realize that we are just sitting there and it shakes you up a bit, you know, makes you realize you're just a tiny speck in that great big stratosphere. So it uh, certainly makes you realize that uh, all your struggles that we go through and all the worry are pretty well insignificant in the world, you know. That was a really good answer. Uh -huh. So I, I, the next one I would think of would be, what do you want out of life and have you gotten that? Well, uh, yeah, I want happiness and I've got that and I want money, I haven't got that. So uh, I'm still struggling for the money. I got the happiness. I'm still struggling for the million dollars. They didn't pay you for Mad Max? Come on. Oh yeah, I got paid. But because I asked for so much money, a week he couldn't afford me any longer than one week. Yeah. So I thought I did a coup by saying, I want this much a week. He said, okay, I'll pay you, but I'll put your work in one week. Yeah. Well, so then the other third question I could think of is just how do you manage to still look exactly the same 45 years later? Well, thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for that. It's the hair. It's the lack of the hair. If I put hair on there, I, I'd, I'd be looking like an old man that I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I might have to shave my head too. Uh, yeah. That no. might be good advice. <laughs> decades in modern history. One terrorist group alone set off over a hundred bombs in New York and Chicago. For a while there, there was a bomb going off every other day on average in New York City. Every other day, a bomb was going off that was set off by a terrorist organization. We had 9-11 happened and then ever since 9-11 in the US we've been totally paranoid about terrorism. But what about the 1970s? Bombs were just commonplace. One of the bombs that was placed by this terrorist organization was found by an office worker. It was a bomb just like you see in the movies. It had a timer on it. It said there are 12 seconds left. He, he found a bomb? It said, you have 12 seconds. He shouted, it's a bomb. And the entire floor of his entire office, 50 people evacuated successfully. They all lived. Which means that they must have been just on edge, just like waiting and expecting 
for someone to shout, it's a bomb, and they just run out the room. They were just, they were ready. That's how common these terrorist acts were in the 70s. Hijackings of planes were so common that they seriously considered building a fake Cuba in Florida. So that when the hijacker said, fly us to Cuba, they would fly them to fake Cuba instead of real Cuba, and then they could arrest them in fake Cuba. So the 70s was a very interesting time, and it led to some very interesting movies. The 70s are what led us to create the amazing film Mad Max. And this has been A Weekend with Max. I'm Wayson Firebird. Thank you for inviting me into your home or onto your portable device. Have a good night. They say people don't believe in heroes anymore. Well, damn them! You and me, Max. We're gonna give them back to heroes. Thanks to Mad Skelly for the camera work. What are you doing? Roger Wood told me that the secret to eternal youth was to shave my head.